driving and just heard a loud pop. And I thought it was an exhaust leak, but sure enough, the spark plug uh, stripped out. I can see where it broke the, the coil pack on top of my intake. I just think it's funny because there's no uh, check engine light. All right, before we get started, I just want to talk about a couple things. The problem, as far as I know, is the cylinder head in the 4.6, 5.4 during certain years the spark plug or the threads for the spark plug are short so theoretically the spark plug gets a little loose and then it just it can back out so it's there's like four or five threads the spark plug eventually backs out and now it's sitting the coil packs bolted down to the intake it's sitting right here and it's just bouncing and it's damaging the threads in the cylinder head is damaging the spark plug. This is the coil pack that I took off my car. And I've heard maybe like a slight exhaust leak on the car. I never gave it much thought. Probably about a week or two before this, uh, the coil pack popped off, I it got louder and I couldn't tell if it was an exhaust leak or if there was like um, a lifter uh, ticking. And it was really confusing because I couldn't distinguish between the two. So now it starts to make sense that it was leaking. The spark plug was backed out and it was leaking right here. It was just jumping up and down. And what I was hearing was is probably the spark plug trying to go up and down and up and down and the leaking through here and you could tell it's been leaking for a while because this whole boot is just deteriorated so the gas fumes and the ignition leaking through must have uh, really worn away at it um, but you can see it finally uh, so it probably sits here and the car wants to work for a while and then eventually this just can't take the pressure anymore and it breaks off the coil pack and it shoots up. Uh, some people say these shoot up so hard that they lose them. Uh, luckily this one was just right in place and I was able to get it out no problem. Now the spark plug was still in the hole a little bit. I was having trouble getting it out with the spark plug socket. Alright, one little trick especially with these overhead cam motors is to use a piece of uh, fuel line. So this is just your standard like 3 8 fuel line. And uh, what you could do is shove this down the spark plug hole and it'll actually go right over the tip of this. And with a little bit of pressure, it pushes on and then you're able to finish twisting it out and uh, you can get the spark plug out. And same with uh, installing it if you want, you could use this to get it in and uh, install it. Um, but yeah, I was fighting uh, with it for a while because of the spark plug socket wouldn't hold it and uh, was able to use this fuel line to stick it on. So, say theoretically, a way to maybe pr uh, prevent this is to go and make sure that your spark plugs are tight and uh, torqued down properly. I've seen some people saying like clockwork that every 30,000 miles their spark plugs start to get loose. And so they have to go in, they go in about every 30,000 miles, tighten down the spark plugs, make sure they're torqued right. And But at the same time, if your spark plugs are mildly damaged, or the threads in the heads mild, mildly damaged already, and you go and torque it down, I mean, theoretically, you could uh, uh, strip it out. So uh, just be prepared for that, but uh, maybe pay close attention to, uh, you know, exhaust leaking sounds and valve ticks because that potentially could be the spark plug um, being loose in there. The, so one of the preventive things that possibly is, uh, you know, make sure these are tight. If, uh, it, if it pops out, um, theoretically, maybe you got, you got it before it was damaged too much. So you could uh, try threading the spark plug back in. If the spark plug doesn't thread back in, maybe go ahead and uh, chase the threads with a thread chaser and this type right here a socket has to go around the thread chaser and it won't be able to fit in the spark plug hole because the sockets so you need one like this 
they call it for uh, a limited uh, limited reach or something like that, limited space. But this uses a uh, extension, a 3 8 extension, and then you're not you don't have the big bulky socket around uh, limiting your space, and then you can go in there and uh, chase the threads. So before you go out and shell out two three hundred dollars for a a kit or have a mechanic uh, do it. Theoretically, maybe you could uh, get a, get by with chasing your spark plugs and uh, threading in a new spark plug. And uh, maybe that could at least get you home, too, if uh, you're out somewhere. Um, as far as the coil pack, this one's off an 01 uh, Crown Vic. I'm a, I gotta cross-reference the numbers, uh, but I'm pretty sure this should work fine. I don't really feel like going out and buying one right now, so I'm gonna just take this one off uh, my car that's parked. What's up? I'm getting ready to replace the threads in the spark plug hole on the 99 F-150. I ended up getting the Calvans kit because the inserts are a lot thicker. Just seemed like a better kit in general. Um, some of the tools I'm using is uh, this piece that comes with the kit. This will let me know when the valves are closed. You hook up an air supply and then this will actually pop out when the valves are closed. Um, it comes with inserts, it comes with a drill bit, a tap, a guide for the drill bit and the tap. <clears throat> I'm going to use this blower tool right here to uh, blow out the combustion chamber to get all the shavings out. Um, some people use a shorter one with like a rubber hose, so just whatever. Here's an inspection camera. Or a boroscope. I was able to rent this from AutoZone. Um, plus, uh, the kit recommends using an air ratchet. They say use a high quality air ratchet uh, for the smoothness. So, I don't really have, say, that high quality one, but between the two I had, I tested. This one, this one actually has a little bit of a hiccup to it, I noticed, and this one runs completely smooth. So, I'm going to use this one. Um, as far as getting the insert, once it's drilled and tapped, <clears throat> I'm gonna watching some other people's videos. I'm gonna use uh, Thread Locker and uh, JB Weld. So one thing you gotta think is regular uh, Thread Locker, whether it be Loctite or the uh, the Permatex one, they only go to 300 degrees. And if you think about it, inside the combustion chamber near the spark plug could probably maybe reach 300 degrees. So definitely I want to go with a high temperature uh, Thread Locker. And then uh, JB Weld standard, I uh, can do about 500, I'm pretty sure. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, the best of both worlds, we'll use a little JB Weld around the top. And then we'll use thread locker right here. And then of course, uh, spark plug. Replacement spark plug. All right, the first step we want to do is make sure the valves are closed and the piston piston is down. So we have the special tool that goes in the in the spark plug hole. And we already moved the engine over, so we know the valves are closed, but we're just going to double check so it's in the spark plug hole. We'll turn the air on, and it, if it pops out, that lets us know that the valves are closed. So as you can see, I pushed it in there and it keeps popping out. So now we know the valves are closed. We'll go ahead and use the boroscope and uh, double check where the piston's at and uh, make sure we're good. Okay, and we looked down here before, we seen that the threads were messed up. <clears throat> And uh, we actually tried to ch chase the threads with a tap, and uh, all it did was uh, make it worse. I'm 
But yeah, there's the threads right there. It's kind of hard to see on camera. Um, but as far as we could tell, there's no insert previously in here, which is good. Um, but if we go down in, we can see, we can feel with the borescope and we can see the pistons way down here. So. So that should be more than enough room for us to uh, do our work. Okay, so the first step was make sure the valves are closed. Second step, use a borescope to make sure the piston is down two to four inches. So we did, we used the, the air tool, we stuck it in there, it's popping out, we know the valves are closed. We went ahead with the borescope, we checked uh, the piston, and that's plenty far down, so that's out of the way. The next is to put the guide into the cylinder and then we can go ahead and start drilling right here and we're going to go ahead and lube it up and of course you know you're going to need random uh, sockets and stuff like that um, but most people that are going to attempt a job like this are going to uh, you know have your basic uh, sockets half inch sockets and spark plug sockets and things like that just a couple side notes you know Use safety glasses when it's appropriate, like blowing out the cylinder and, you know, whenever you really feel like you should wear them, you probably should. Um, with the air tool, one of the things you can do is, once it's in there, you would actually come down to the crank pulley right down there and turn it over until the cylinder's in the right position. Um, but I went ahead and bumped it at the ignition switch, and I have another key that... Um, won't start the car it only unlocks the door but it will turn it over so I just use that to bump the motor over until it was in the right position all right so the guide's gonna go down in there in the spark plug hole and then the bit is gonna go through the guide and drill all the way through the head and then literally you're probably gonna get to about right here and then it's gonna just the bits gonna drop and then that's how you know you're through and then luckily there's this pin right here to stop it from falling through the motor. So we'll go ahead and drill this out real quick. I got some WD-40 to uh, lube up the bit, just to make it a little easier. And then after that, we'll have to clean out the cylinder. All right, we'll go ahead and put the insert in. And then put the flat spot up against the valve cover. And it's in there. The a lot of that is just to stop it from rocking back and forth. Go ahead and uh, lube up the bit. All right, now it's in the guide. Half inch socket right there. Then we can get our air ratchet on right there. And uh, go ahead and drill that out. And I tried not to remove the fuel rail right here. Um, I just, you know, moved a couple vacuum lines around, pushed the heater line back, and, you know, just trying to make it as pain-free as possible. Took some convincing. But you can see right there, it drilled through all the way. And you see that pin now is resting on the side of the guide. So now we know we uh, made it all the way through. Okay, we just got done <clears throat> drilling through. Took a little longer than I expected, but uh, seemed to go okay. Now we want to use the air gun to blow out the shavings. And uh, of course, for this uh, part, you definitely want to use uh, some eye protection. Of course with the shavings um, right now because we just drilled we got out a lot of the shavings we still have to tap so we want to make sure that uh, we get a lot of the shavings out after we tap too so they don't all have to be out right now um, but for the hell of it I'm gonna put the bar scope down and see what the drill hole looks like and just look around I mean right off the bat <clears throat> you can still see all the shavings on the side of the cylinder I mean, on the side of the spark plug hole.
Doesn't look too bad uh, where I drilled it. Yeah, and there's some little shavings in here. Almost seems like it'd be impossible to get rid of all the small shavings because they're just going to stick to where the oil's at. <clears throat> okay, so we use the air gun, blow out all the shavings. Now we want to insert the tap into the guide. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and tap that out. Uh, we're going to put grease on here to, uh, in here to catch uh, some more of the fillings if we can. And then basically you're supposed to stop at this V. And you can put this little E-clip on it. Alright, so the clip can go right here. But I'm afraid if you're tapping it and you're not paying attention, if you put pressure on there, you could potentially uh, strip out the threads again. So I'm just going to go ahead and do no clip and just pay it as close attention as possible. And when the top of the guide meets this V-groove, I'm going to stop. Um, and now with this, instead of coming from the top, you have to come in from the bottom. Like so. So now you go ahead and drop this all in there like that. I went ahead and did the grease on the tap to help catch the fillings or the shavings and then I'm going to go ahead and clean everything with brake cleaner when I'm done to try to get as clean as possible. Alright so I got the tap in and the guide. Go ahead and start doing that but you could see a lot of the shavings that came out from when I drilled. Oh yeah, it's definitely tapping. All right, it's hard to see, but I hit the groove and it was actually threading. It's not pulling out, but it was threading forward. So I'm pretty sure that lets me know it tapped all the way through. All right, I got the tap out. See a lot of the shavings are at the top. I guess I should put a little more grease at the top, but you know, it did pull a good, a good little amount out. <clears throat> so. And it felt like it tapped all the way through and I was able to pull it out all the way, so we should be good to go. Let's start from the beginning again. We did the valves, <clears throat> made sure the valves are closed. We used a boroscope to make sure the piston was down. We went ahead and put the guide in and drilled it. We cleaned out some of the shavings, then we went ahead and tapped it. So we put the uh, tap in the bottom of the guide, we put the guide in there and we tapped it to the V. Uh, groove into the tap So we did that and actually tapped all the way through and so now it says incomplete tap hole will not allow the spark plug to seat properly We know we tapped all the way through we could feel it Now it says again blow out the shavings Then we'll screw in the spark plug. The only thing is now we put grease in there. There's shavings So we're gonna go ahead and clean it all with brake cleaner. We're gonna use the boroscope and check out how the Threads came out that we just tapped and we'll get it really clean and I make sure we're good to go. All right, so you can see there's shavings on here that still need to be clean. We got this grease in here that we got to go ahead and uh, clean. But I mean, uh, just right off that, I'm impressed. Those are, uh, look at those threads. And they, it goes all the way through. So when we put that insert in, it's gonna seat really good. And then, so, and I'm not con too concerned about the shavings, to be honest. They're all pretty small. And of course, you don't want any in here. So we're gonna just clean it out the best we can and you know, just hope for the best. But I'm more worried about screwing up the tapping process because once you screw this up, there's really no going back. Um, but so all we can do now is shoot a whole bunch of brake cleaner down in here, get all these shavings and grease cleaned up and uh, then get the spark plug in. See if we can get a little better. We turn the light down a little bit, it's not as shiny. But yeah, it definitely looks better than the original threads and the non-threaded hole, that's for sure. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean out the cylinder with brake cleaner as good, best as I can. So, you know, brake clean and blow it out and uh, 
get it as clean as possible. Uh, not a lot of shavings came out that time, so I'm thinking I got a lot uh, actually on the tap with the grease. All right, here's after the first cleaning. You can still see a little grease. Not nearly as much shavings. There weren't, weren't the shavings hanging onto the threads like they were. You get in here, you can still see the shavings. It's not horrible, but it's not good. Um, like I said, I'm gonna just keep, you know, spraying this out. Uh, try to get all this grease that's up here and then I'll go ahead and uh, let it dry a little bit and try to blow out all the shavings some more and I uh, just keep doing that until uh, I'm happy with it all right to try to clean the grease and the shavings out more I put a rag on the end of a flat blade and twisted it and uh, hopefully you can uh, clean that cylinder wall better and get all that grease off Keyword, hopefully. Oh, yeah. So it was a clean rag when I put it in. So it definitely, uh, I think, got that grease that I was worried about. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, that, gr that rag and the screwdriver did the trick. Got all those shavings, that little bit of grease that was left down there. And, of course, I mean, the residue is probably still there. So what we'll have to do is, uh, you know, hit it with some more brake cleaner. But I mean, it's not all gunked up. See, that's all pretty clean. Yeah, it's really, I'm trying to get rid of this glare. Yeah, it's not too bad in here considering you can tell there's some little shaving still. So go ahead and just, you know, hit it with some more brake cleaner, blow it out. But uh, it's almost there. Letting the brake cleaner dry one more time. Here's the spark plug that was in it. When I actually took it out, this was actually flattened. So it was like getting the hell beat out of it down there. Um, and this is the new plug AutoZone gave me. And you can tell the seating points are basically the same. The threads go to the same spot. This just has way more threads on it. And... Uh, which this isn't 100% threaded, but I'd say more threads are better than less. All right, so we got the spark plug on the insert. And what we're gonna do is uh, put a little JB welder on the top here, and then we'll do a uh, th uh, thread locker around the threads. And then so the spark plug at this time becomes your installation tool. And uh, you'll get the spark plug socket and then you'll screw all that into the threads that we just did in the motor. All right, there's a cool little shot uh, with the piston against the cylinder wall. Still see there's a little bit of shavings, but I mean, probably blow it out one more time, stick the rag in there, clean out the hole. And see what I did with the rag is I just put the flat tip on the end and then uh, you know, just let it catch naturally. See, and then it starts twisting. So I've got to do this by hand to get it tight, but you get the idea. And then I got a nice little uh, cylinder I can uh, shove down there and, you know, clean out the hole really good. We'll go in here and give it a nice little. There we go. Seeing it catches on the rag and it twists it in there. And it's pretty much clean, but there was, you know, when you're blowing it out, a little bit of shavings get caught on the sidewall. So we'll use that to get this. Or we'll use this to get those shavings. See, I cleaned a little more uh, yeah, shavings and stuff out right there. Um, but we're pretty much good. If I'm going to look in there and if it looks pretty decent, then we'll go ahead and thread it or thread in the spark plug. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's not like, it doesn't look like there's a huge deposit of shavings in there. And it's like one of those things, I mean, there's going to be, no matter how, how much you clean this, there's going to be shavings. But, I mean, that looks pretty clean in there. So yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, thread this, uh, get the spark plug ready to thread. Okay, so we tapped it. We blew out the shavings, check with the bar scope to make sure there's no material left in the cylinder. So that's good. Now we wanna screw the spark plug into the insert, spread JB Weld or another heat resistant metal bonding material, and then use the air ratchet to run the spark plug and insert into the head. I might just use a regular uh, wrench, make me more comfortable. Then we'll go ahead and torque it. In the actual video, they say it they explain uh, 20 foot pounds, but they even say to like, you know, eyeball it uh, if you can't get a torque wrench in there. And uh, so we'll go ahead and do that next. We already got the spark plug on the socket. Oh, we got the spark plug on the insert, so we'll go ahead and uh, get this uh, mixed, the JB Weld and stuff on it. All right, so we got a spark plug socket that has a little rubber insert in it. And what that, that's gonna do is help hold this spark plug like that. So you just go down slow and it'll keep it from falling. <clears throat> of course, you wanna make sure this is gapped right. Uh, nine times out of 10 when you buy these from AutoZone, they're gapped correctly, I'd say. Um, but it, there's gonna be every once, one every once in a while that's not gapped right. So make sure it's gapped to your specification. And again, with this, we're going to thread it into the insert. And then we're going to put JB Weld here and thread lock around here. So we'll get those mixed up. All right, the JB Welds, you want to mix these 50-50, uh, like same amount from each tube. And uh, we just need a little bit. This sets up in about four to six hours. The thread locker sets up in about 20 minutes, it says, but it says fully cures overnight. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and uh, put this together and just let everything cure a uh, solid day, just to be on the safe side. All right, so we got a nice little 50-50. All right, so we got all this mixed up. It's a nice uh, even gray. Okay, you can see we got a nice cool amount of uh, JB Weld around the top, and then see it'll seat up in that ridge. All right, I got a little crazy with the thread locker, but it's on there. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, go thread this in the motor. All right, so we got it in. We're threading it in right now. All right, it stopped turning. Go ahead and hit it with the ratchet just a little bit. All right, oh, that's definitely tight. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, get a torque wrench on there. All right, so we got the torque wrench now set to 20 foot pounds. We'll go in there and uh, Try to torque it, should be okay. And then we'll go ahead and let that sit at 24 hours just to dry really good. And then we, in the meantime, we can, uh, because the uh, coil pack broke, like it does 90% of the time, we gotta undo the other half of the coil pack. And then I gotta get a coil pack to reinstall and I can hook up all the vacuum lines and all that good stuff. One way. Twisting and twisting until it got to the 20 inch pound. So I think it's kind of important to do a right torque spec because you're putting in something in the brand new threads it might feel tight but it might not have fully seated yet so i got in a solid uh probably full turn and a half before it uh it hit the 20 foot pounds so um maybe uh find the torque spec you are most comfortable with um but the 20 uh foot pounds worked good for me all right just to recap a couple things um, I definitely want to make sure you 
make sure the uh, piston's in the right position. And uh, you know, jump starting it over with the starter switch, uh, I didn't want to do it, I wanted to do it by hand, but it ended up being quick and easy. Um, drilling it took longer than expected, but it drilled through fine, so you know, be a little bit patient. I had to hook up a second uh, air tank to my compressor to give it just a little bit more pressure. Um, the tap, the tap worked good. Um, a little bit before I hit the groove to let me to stop, it almost felt like it had stripped out and what had happened was it had fully tapped. So it was actually just starting to thread through. So just uh, make sure you go slow and steady and uh, if you feel that it's probably just tapped through and you're really close to this and just go ahead and you know get it tapped through all the way and uh, then pull it back out. Um, other than that, uh, you know, make sure to blow it out really good. And uh, wrapping the uh, towel on the screwdriver was a big help in getting the rest of the grease out and the shavings in the hole. And you know, just keep blowing it out, brake clean, wiping until you can get it as good as you can. And then uh, we went ahead and torqued it down with the insert to 20 foot pounds. And uh, now we're just gonna wait, wait till tomorrow. And uh, it's getting dark right now, so tomorrow I'm just going to go ahead and get the coil pack ready, get everything cleaned up, and get it all ready to start tomorrow. Here's a little video of the insert in there. And uh, you can see where some of the... Alright, I got the broken uh, piece of uh, coil pack off the intake. Here's the other coil pack I had off the 01 uh, Mercury Marquis. Um... The coil pack off the truck has the same top part number, um, but the actual manufacturing number is a little different. Um, but I cross-referenced uh, with eBay and AutoZone uh, coil packs, and between the 99 uh, 5.4 and the 01 4.6, uh, they're all trying to give the exact same part number. Um, so this should be more than close enough to work. Um, I mean, if not, it'll probably throw a trouble code or something, and we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do this for now. Um, otherwise, I might just go ahead and glue the piece back on the other coil pack. and Because uh, it actually fits in pretty tight, so I could repair the other coil pack pretty easy. Or I'll just spend the money and uh, eventually and I'm going to buy all new coil packs and spark plugs and uh, go ahead and uh, do a tune-up. Um, but yeah, I'll get this in right now and uh, see how it goes. Alright, I pulled the heater hose. I had the heater hose jammed up here. I pulled that out. Got the vacuum lines hooked back up. I actually had the PVC valve undone from the valve cover and I forgot to block it. Um, so, you know, hopefully... Uh, not very many metal shavings got in there. Honestly, didn't see any accumulating over here, but I mean, it was an open hole, so. Um, make sure if you take out your PVC valve and vacuum lines and stuff, you should plug everything up. That was an oversight on my part. Um, but yeah, I got the coil pack in, everything's plugged in, everything's back. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clear the trouble. Uh, I ended up getting a uh, trouble code, uh, check engine light, um, so I'm gonna double check those I'll clear them I didn't unplug the battery this whole time because I have to smog the car soon and I'm trying to keep all the check engine uh, tests uh, to a minimum so hopefully we can clear these codes and uh, um, I could get my car smog soon on my truck I mean I stuck the boroscope down uh, the valve cover where it was open and you could see for sure there's like uh, four little specks of shaving so I'm going to try to fish those out uh, with some tape on the end of a screwdriver. Like this, I put a, some duct tape on it. Alright, it's working. I got one or two right there. Super tiny, but still, you don't want that in there. Alright, I just keep cleaning it with a rag. <clears throat> and uh, hitting it with the boroscope and seeing where it's at. Yeah, there you can see one of the shavings I picked up right in the middle on the tape. I think there's only one more in there now. All right, I've probably been fighting this for like 15 minutes, but you know, just between duct tape and a rag and been shoving the tool down there and it pretty much picked up uh, 
all those big shavings. All right, it's scanning right now. All right, cylinder three misfire. So that was cylinder three, and it was definitely, you could see how there's a misfire when the freaking spark plug popped out. I right, got back to the main menu. My freaking thing's a little damaged, but. So race codes. Are you sure you want to erase diagnostic results and codes? Yes. Codes remaining zero. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully with the code erased, um, I'll be able to start up the car. There'll be no code, and then it'll be less uh, self-checks the computer has to do um, before it's fully tested itself, and I can go get it smogged. Right, the truck's running don't have a spark plug shooting out again there's no check engine light off idle so that's good all right yeah I got it up to running temp uh, seems to be driving good so I'm pretty happy like I said I'm, I gotta worry about getting a smog here soon and uh, I don't worry about getting uh, some new spark plugs and coil packs and uh, replacing all the spark plugs and uh, I'll get them torqued right. If it happens to strip a spark plug, then uh, we'll go ahead and